We stand and face the processional crucifix. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Jesus Christ is risen today, Alleluia. Our triumphant holy day, Alleluia. You did once fall on our cross, Alleluia. Suffer to redeem. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, 
We confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by His authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I awake, and I am still with you. Alleluia. You lay your hand upon me, Alleluia. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high, I cannot attain it. O oh Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in Sheol, you are there. Even there your hand shall lead me, and your right hand shall hold me. Glory be to the Father and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. I awake and I am still with you. Alleluia. You lay your hand upon me. Alleluia. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high, I cannot attain it. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord.
Lord. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, through your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, you overcame death and opened to us the gates of everlasting life. We humbly pray that, you, that we may live before you in righteousness and purity forever. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. The Old Testament for the resurrection of our Lord is written in the prophet Isaiah, the 25th chapter. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all people a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wine, of rich food full of marrow, of aged wine well refined. And he will swallow up on this mountain and the covering that is cast over all people the veil that is spread over all nations, he will swallow up death forever. And the Lord God will wipe away tears from all faces, and the reproach of his people he will take away from all the earth. For the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Behold, this is our God. We have waited on him that he might save us. This is the Lord. We have waited for him let us be glad and rejoice in His salvation. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for He is good, and His steadfast love is forever. The epistle is written in St. Paul's first letter to the church in Corinth, the 15th chapter. Now, if Christ is proclaimed as raised from the dead, how can some of you say, that there is no resurrection of the dead. But if there is no resurrection of the dead, then not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, then our preaching is in vain, and our faith, and your faith, is in vain. We are even found to be misrepresenting God because we testify about God that He raised Christ, whom He did not raise if it is true that the dead are not raised. For if the dead are not raised, not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile, and you are still in your sins. Then those also who have fallen asleep in Christ have perished. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are, all, we are of all people most to be pitied. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For as by a man came death, by a man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, so also in Christ shall all be made alive. But each in his own order, Christ the first fruits, then at his coming those who belong to Christ. Then comes the end when he delivers the kingdom of God the Father after destroying every rule and every authority and power. For he must reign until he has put all enemies under his feet. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We stand.
Alleluia, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Alleluia, Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 20th chapter. Now on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb early while it was still dark and saw that the stone had been taken away from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. So Peter went out with the other disciple, and they were going toward the tomb. Both of them were running together. But the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. And stooping to look in, he saw the linen cloths lying there. But he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen cloths lying there, and the face cloth, which had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen cloths, but folded up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who had reached the tomb first, also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture, that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples went back to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb, and as she wept, she stooped to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had lain, one on the head, one at the head and one at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. Having said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you seeking? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take care of him, and take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. She said, uh, Jesus said to her, Do not cling to me, for I have not yet ascended to my father, but go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord, and that he had said these things to her. This is the Gospel of our Lord. You may be seated.
Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The fast is broken. The feast commences. And not just any feast, but a feast of rich foods, a feast of well-aged wine, of rich food full of marrow, of aged wine well refined. Yes, all the foods and drinks you love to enjoy will be without limit. They will not run out. More than that, all the consequences you dread from overconsumption, the hangovers, the Hypertension, the weight gain, the heart disease, the guilt, the pain of stupid, selfish, self-serving decisions will be no more. All that gives pleasure will be forever enjoyed. What a glorious party it will be. What a joyful Easter indeed. Yet as awesome as the party is, it is only possible because of a greater, more important day a more important event. In this temporal sphere, the yoke of sin upon us, we cannot fully grasp with that yoke on us that we long for the party in an idolatrous way. We cannot help but desire the party as the end in itself and that everything else becomes a means to the end, including Jesus himself. We covet the wine and food, not so much for the gifts they are as given by God, but rather the gods they have become for us, as the comfort and the help we turn to in our time of need. They numb our pain, distract our heartache, eliminate inhibitions, and silence anxieties. These things we long for are not the joy found in the ending, never-ending feast of Jesus, They are not the joys because they do not do the trick. They do not last forever. No, our pain, heartaches, loneliness, our fears and anxieties need greater medicine. Greater medicine than strong drink and fatty foods. The Easter feast on Mount Zion is to be looked forward to through the greater good day and only through that day. Good Friday is why we are here this bright morning. Good Friday is the only reason the fast is broken and the eternal feast of Zion is enjoyed without reservation. It is because on that mount of Calvary, the sin that causes all from which we attempt to escape on our own is destroyed once and for all. Death The wage of sin is paid for in full by Jesus and His bloody death. On this bright morning, we have joy. Joy that goes beyond all sadness because death is destroyed. Death is destroyed because sin is forgiven. Jesus has made atonement. He has paid the price as our substitute. By His suffering and death, what you and I deserve is taken from us and born by Him. There is no doubt to be had by us. Jesus who died is not dead. He lives. He is resurrected in body, wounds and all, in order to show that what He said and promised is true. Destroy this temple in three days and I will rebuild it. His resurrection is the proof that the enemy of death is ultimately undone by Him. He is the first fruits of the grave. You and I are now free, free to live without fear, not even of death. In fact, especially of death. There is nothing that can befall you that could destroy the joy of this Easter morning. Cancer, depression, deafness, blindness, forgetfulness, bitterness, or even incontinence are impotent to harm you and your joy. You have Jesus. You have His word and promise. You have the witness of His apostles and evangelists who all saw saw Him dead 
and then alive again. You are baptized into His most holy name. You are His, and He is yours. Rejoice. This Easter joy of which Jesus gives is not necessarily the cloud nine skipping through the streets singing with the birds emotion we might imagine it to be. It can be that. But often, it's nothing of the sort. However, joy can be yours still. Even in the midst of any cross you might bear. St. Paul to the Hebrews writes, For the joy set before him, Christ endured the cross, despising the shame. Jesus on Good Friday was filled with joy. Joy, even though he was in bitter agony, suffering for the sins of the whole world. True and lasting joy is anchored in rock-solid truth. Truth that remains no matter what, even burning fire on the last day. It is the word of the gospel of Jesus Christ crucified for you that is the rock-solid truth. It transcends all because it is dependent on no one but Jesus only. His life, His suffering, His death, His resurrection are what give it meaning. Having Him in holy baptism, you lack no good thing. All you need is given to you. All your needs of body and soul are satisfied. Believe it. In faith, grabbing hold of the words and promises of God through Jesus Christ, you are whole. And all fear is displaced. You are changed from within. Your whole existence is no longer defined by sin and death, but rather the transcendent act and proclamation of Jesus on the cross. It is finished. It is finished for you. Salvation is yours. Eternal life is yours. Jesus is yours. Where He is brightly shining, there is no room for darkness, no room to look elsewhere for pleasure and joy. Where the gospel is truly believed and received, worry, lust, greed, anger, discontentment, doubt, and unbelief are eliminated. Where these exist, and they do exist in every one of our hearts, they destroy from within. The devil, the world, and our own sinful hearts will lead us farther and farther from Jesus and God's good gifts. They will lead us to sow our own fig leaves and hide from our guilt, our shame, our death, which is easily done even today when the joy of Easter is divorced from Good Friday. Let us not do such a foolish thing. For Jesus died for sinners. And he rose again on the third day to show that sinners who believe in him for their forgiveness have all joy. They have all peace and all gladness, such as the world could never give. The repentant confess all before Jesus, not to earn his favor, but simply to receive his forgiveness, his life and his salvation, to receive his gracious divine love. To retain willingly even one sin before Jesus is to reject him completely. Repent. For there is no sin that is unforgivable. There is no sin that is not forgiven by Jesus' blood except the, the sin of refusing to be forgiven by him. Refusing to let Jesus and him crucified be your Savior. Now Peter denied Jesus three times. Mary Magdalene was a prostitute and Paul was a murderer of Christians, yet all three are awaiting the resurrection on the last day. Peter, de Peter's denying tongue, tongue proclaimed forever the joys, the joyful good news of Jesus Christ crucified for sinners like him. Mary who used her body in the dark of night in the light of Christ's forgiveness would at first light be the first to witness the resurrection of Jesus, seeing his resurrected body. 
the very resurrected body that was sacrificed for her darkest deeds. Paul, who mutilated the body of Jesus by killing Christians, would repent. He would be drowned to death in holy baptism, all to be resurrected to new life in Jesus in order to preach the gospel, to be by God's grace his instrument to make more Christians. Easter joy is yours. You are forgiven. You are restored. You are made new. Hear and believe the words of God. Hear and believe the hundreds of witnesses of Jesus' resurrection. Hear and believe the gospel of the forgiveness of sins for His sake. The gospel word never fails you, for the word is Jesus. And as death could not keep Jesus in the grave, neither will anything keep you down, you who live and believe in Him for forgiveness, life, and salvation. As Jesus said, He who believes in Me, even though He die, yet shall He live. And he who lives and believes in Me shall never die. So today, remember, remember that in Jesus you are never more alive what Easter joy this is indeed. In Jesus' name, amen. We stand. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. We confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of His Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again, according to the Scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen.
We stand for the offertory. What shall I render to the Lord for all his benefits to me? I will offer the sacrifice of thanksgiving and will call on the name of the Lord. I will take the cup of salvation and will call on the name of the Lord. I will take the cup of the Lord in the presence of all his people in the courts of the Lord's house. In the midst of you, Jesus. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Lord God, on this glorious day, fill your people with a holy fear at the resurrection of your Son, that we would tremble no longer before the grave, but rejoice and live in the truth of your power to save. Lord, in your mercy. Be with Matthew, our synod president, John, our district president, and all our pastors. Keep them faithful to deliver to your people the apostolic gospel of your son's death, burial, and resurrection. Lord, in your mercy. Let us hold fast to the word preached to us, that receiving it with joy, we may take our stand in it and be saved by it. Hinder all who would sow doubt into our hearts, and grant us courage to confess its truth in our life and conversation. Lord, in your mercy. Bless Joseph, our president, and all who make, administer, and judge our laws. Frustrate the forces of evil, and do not let our leaders uh, cooperate with them or further their goals. Guard our armed forces as they stand, watch over us at home and abroad. Let them serve with honor and integrity. Lord, in your mercy. Have mercy on the sick and those in need, especially Renee Knuth, Detlef Pete Osmussen, and Betty Leek, and all those whom we now name in our hearts. Let the dawning light of the new creation in Christ sustain them in faith. In accord with your will, grant them renewed health, a foretaste of their eternal healing in him. Lord, in your mercy, give us joy in your son's vic great victory feast as he shares it with us from this altar. In the eating of his true body and the drinking of his precious blood and faith, overcome our sins by his forgiveness and swallow up our death in his life, that we may be glad and rejoice in his salvation. Lord, in your mercy, comfort those who mourn with the truth of Christ's empty tomb, that in the midst of their grief they may abide in the hope of His resurrection. Uphold them in faith as they await the day when you will wipe away every tear from all faces. Lord, in your mercy. We join today in singing eternal alleluias with innumerable angels in a festal gathering with the assembly of the firstborn enrolled in heaven and with the spirits of the right the spirits of the righteous made perfect and we bring them uh, bring these petitions before you dear father trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ your son our lord who lives and reigns with you and the holy spirit one god now and forever the lord be with you Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and sound, you tarry, that we should at all times and in all places Give thanks to you, 
Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, and most especially are we bound to praise you on this day for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, the very Paschal Lamb, who was sacrificed for us and bore the sins of the world. By his dying, he has destroyed death, and by his rising again, he has restored to us everlasting life. Therefore, with Mary Magdalene, Peter and John, and with the witnesses of the resurrection, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Behold. Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on those whom you created and sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin and be our Savior. With repentant joy, we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and his blood on the cross. Gathered in the name and the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood, as he bids us do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth, to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship, with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. body of Christ.
the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in the one true faith of this life and the life to come. We follow you, God, in peace. the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. true body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you with the one true faith, throughout this life and the life to come. Be far in God's peace, your sins are forgiven. true body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and strengthen and preserve you with the one true faith, from this life to the life of God. We are in God's peace, and our sins are forgiven. So we don't spill them. Okay. I'll take, I'll take these. What I'm gonna do. Just, yeah, you come with me.
Let us pray. O God, the Father, the fountain and source of all goodness, who in loving kindness sent your only begotten Son into the flesh, we thank you that for his sake you have given us pardon and peace in this sacrament. And we ask you not to forsake your children, but always to rule our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, that we may be enabled constantly to serve you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and to be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace. Christ is risen. He is risen Hallelujah. There you go. You may be seated. Every church does it a little differently, so you may be seated. <laughs> 